This is Florence in 1503. We own half of Italy, we're the number 5 great power with only 25 provinces. We have 6 subjects, 4 of which were ready to reconquer their cores for basically no aggressive expansion. We're running 3 level 5 advisors, and the cheapest one is 0.81 ducats a month. We're making 73 ducats a month with armies and forts up, and no inflation, and no loans. We have some of the most developed provinces in the entire world, we're the Curia controller and we're ready to take over the entirety of Italy, form Italy and go on to dominate the world. This is how you can do the same. Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for Florence for EU4 1.36 King of Kings. So Florence is a nation located in central Italy in the area of Tuscany right here and it is one of the best nations if not the best for playing tall thanks to its amazing playing tall focused national ideas starting off with minus 10% development discount and plus 2 yearly papal influence which is actually stronger than you think and finishing off with plus 5% discipline pretty powerful then we have a double idea right here a 5% tech and idea discount which further reinforces the whole playing tall thing then we got a minus 15% merc maintenance discount in interest brand of minus 0.5 plus one yearly prestige plus 15 percent trade efficiency super strong along with the plus 10 percent production efficiency and finishing off with plus 25 percent national manpower super super strong right there florentine missions are also really really good for playing tall right here which focus on developing your nation and conquering the entire region of italy and of course the mission tree is short but sweet because the game does expect you to go on to form italy later on if that's what you want to do as florence of course we do start off with the italian Italian Signoria government reform, which gives us plus 15% national attacks, underrated right there, along with plus 10 max absolutism, and of course the term duration is 12 years. By playing as Florence, you will go on to dominate the entire portion of Northern Italy, conquer Southern Italy before turning your back on the Pope as well and conquering all of Italy. And then if you want to, you can go ahead and form Italy, take Italian ideas and expand even further, or form Italy, stick with Florentine ideas, not expand that much, and focus on your playing tall campaign. Florence, one of my favorite nations in the game, definitely in my top three. So sit back, relax, and learn what you need to do as Florence. All right, all right, here we are as Florence. And of course, the first thing we want to do is kickstart our mission tree by completing these two missions right here, Personal Diplomacy and the Italian League. For this first one right here, we need to have no loans and we need to make 12 Diplo points per month. So that's what we're going to focus on. But first, you're going to go into your estates and summon the Diet. You can pick whichever agenda is best for you. Then we're going to give the clergy Religious State and Clerical Advisory Council, along with Religious Diplomats, and clerical education. Then we're gonna give the nobility primacy of the nobility, increased levies and aristocratic counselors. And finally, we're gonna give the burghers land of commerce, patronage of the arts, commercial advisory board, but not indebted to the burghers. Remember, we can't have any loans in order to accomplish this mission right here. So we'll take the loans a little bit later. Then you can seize land. Now it's time to hire some advisors, and you may notice that you have a ton of stability discount guys, as Florence right at the start. All of these guys are scripted, even Donatello exists, and all of them are historic artists that live in Florence, I think. Either way, you will notice that you have a bunch of level 2 admin advisors that are half cost. Definitely go ahead and hire whichever one of these guys you want. I'm just gonna hire this youngest guy right here. Then go ahead and hire whichever level 1 Diplo advisor you want. These are the guys that are available for me. Diplo rep or improve relations is perfect preferred but I don't have them as a level one guy so I'm just gonna get the straight efficiency guy and then get a morale discipline manpower or fort defense level one mill advisor I do have this morale guy so I am gonna hire him and then of course we are gonna focus on dip we do need to do this in order to get that mission otherwise we wouldn't do this but either way there we go now you're making 12 diplo points a month and you can take the mission personal diplomacy it gives us plus one diplomatic relations and plus 25 percent improved relations for 15 years now to accomplish this mission as you can see we need two allies in the region of italy in order to get a perma claim on tuscany and on emilia romagna and of course this is where our alliances come in the nations that i recommend you ally over in italy are milan and the pope however for some of you just like in my game the pope may have rivaled you either way don't rival the pope back we're gonna keep improving with him and stuff like that until he eventually unrivals us we don't want to have bad relations with the pope we are gonna be staying catholic for the entirety of the campaign 
So if you can go ahead and ally the Pope, then do it and ally Milan as well. In my case, since I can't ally the Pope, I'm just going to ally some other random nation in Italy that I'm going to break my alliance with them after I get this mission right here. So there we go. There's my alliance with Milan. And as soon as a day passes, I'll ally Saluzzo, for example, just to take this mission right here. And then I'll break my alliance with Saluzzo. If you are able to take the decision, declare statute in restraint of appeals, do not do it. This will make the Pope even more angry. We don't want to take that decision. And of course, for now, we're not going to be setting rivals just yet. Then with the other free diplomat, you can go ahead and start improving relations with Austria and your merchants that are in Valencia and Alexandria. We're also going to rearrange them. We don't really need them transferring trade for now. We're not making that much from trade. So what instead we're going to do is we're going to tell them to collect in Genoa and to collect in Venice. And once both of these guys are here, we're going to tell them to establish communities. This will help with alliances and it'll help deter coalitions later on because as you all know aggressive expansion in northern italy just like in the netherlands is one of the highest in the world because we're in the hre and all of these provinces have really high development next we need to rearrange our army just a little bit as well as you can see our force limit is 11 right here so what we're gonna do for now is simply hire two more infantry regiments later when we're ready to start our first war we're also gonna hire the free company there we go now just a few days have passed and my diplomat is free and i'm gonna ally saluzzo and just like that i'm able to take the mission the italian league where we gain a permaclaim on these provinces right here. You've done this either by allying Milan and the Pope or Milan and someone else. Sometimes Milan isn't available either, so I would recommend Savoy and the Pope or Savoy and someone else. But the most ideal allies in Italy are Milan and the Pope. Either way, now that we have these claims right here, we're waiting for December 12th. Of course, don't forget to tell these merchants to establish communities once they arrive. Now that it's December 12th, you do need to check the alliances of the initial nations that we might want to fight. And the initial nations that we want to fight are Siena, Luca, Bologna, and Ferrara. Ideally, the best nation you can fight first is the nation of Siena right here, because if we get Siena right here, that will enable us to spy on Naples. And what we want to do by spying on Naples, or Aragon in this case, their overlord, is to get a claim on Naples right here, because as you all know, a couple of years after the game starts, Aragon just lets Naples go for free, they're no longer Aragon's junior partner, and we can catch Naples without an ally for a month or two or something like that, which would enable us to, of course, declare on them as well. However, if you can't declare on Siena first, that's not a big deal, you're just going to fight someone else, and we're going to be taking Naples later on. It's just luck whether you can fight Naples right at the start. So, of course, go ahead and check and see which one of your neighbors is the easiest to fight. Preferably, it would be Siena. And judging by the alliances in my game right here, Bologna is allied to the Pope. That's sort of annoying. I don't want to fight the Pope right at the start. Ferrara is allied to Aragon, which of course is extremely annoying. Luca has joined Genoa Straight League and they're allied to them. And they're allied to Savoy, which of course makes it tough as well. But Siena right here, they're only allied to Provence, which does make them the easiest nation to fight in my opinion. Since France will probably fight Provence soon either way. Or maybe Burgundy or someone like that. After you've seen which of these nations is the easiest to fight, you can go ahead and get started for your war. You're going to do that by going into the burgers right here and getting indebted to the burgers now after we've accomplished that mission. And I also recommend hiring the free company as well. Now we're just waiting for these additional troops and the free company to recruit. I do also recommend hiring a general. And once your armies have recruited, it is time to declare your first war. And by the way, a lot of times it happens that you can't actually declare a war this soon. The alliance situation is not that good and you may need help from your allies in order to do these wars. So if you can't declare a war versus any of these guys right here in 1445, don't sweat it. It's not a big deal. Just curry favors with whoever you've allied over in Italy and they'll help you out in your war. But if you can declare your first war, then that's excellent. Go ahead and rival the nation that you're going to declare on. And then you can also get additional rivals. I'm going to rival Luca and Ferrara right here and simply go ahead and start your war. Whenever you're ready, it doesn't have to be now. And there we go. I've started my first war versus Siena. During these early couple of years, we're working to get alliances with Austria and France as well. As an Italian nation, we do have the ability to do that, ally both of these guys without either of them breaking their alliance with us. If you can't ally both of them, it's preferable that you ally Austria. And there we go, I can already Royal Mary France in fact. If you do manage to ally France and they're in that war with England, they are gonna call you in. But it's not a big deal, you're gonna join the war and simply not do anything. During this war, you can also start building up your navy a little bit over here. I recommend building up about 10 galleys. Of course, you'll do that when you have the sailors. You won't be getting too much, 
because you only have one coastal province. If you did manage to declare on Siena first, right here in the early portion of the game, you should also immediately start spying on Aragon. Now, of course, as Florence, we also start off with the amazing Cosimo de' Medici right here, who's a 655 right at the start. And hopefully for you, he'll live quite long. In some of my games, he's lived until 80. But in this game right here, he died 1445. Luckily, his relative is pretty good. While I'm in this war, I can also Royal Mary Austria. As we can see after I wrap up this war, I'll be able to ally both Austria and France. This is something you want to do as well. If you are fighting Siena first, hopefully you've wrapped up the war with them before you get this event right here. As we can see in my game, Naragon just decided to let Naples go for free. And I've been spying on Aragon for no reason because now that spy network isn't valid for Naples. So I'm going to start spying on Naples. Hopefully, they'll have no allies or super weak allies, and I'll be able to fight them right after I finish my war with Sienna. That is the most lucky start you can get, fighting Sienna super quick, and then having the ability to declare on Naples super quick, right when they have no allies. I got a pop-up from Provence because I'm fighting them that Naples has allied them. So right now in my game right here, I'm still good. I'm already fighting Provence and actually in this war right here, I can make them end their alliance with Naples and Naples will still be allyless. If they ally someone like this, it's not really a problem. Sometimes it happens though that they ally France and Austria. Although it shouldn't really happen if you've already royal married them since you'll have locked in one of their diplo slots and they won't want to have any more diplomatic relations. But yeah, if Naples allies someone weak like this, it's still not a problem and you could still declare. But of course, if you're not fighting Siena, you're working on fighting Luca, Bologna, or Ferrara. Doesn't matter which one of these guys it is. Whoever you're fighting up here, you are going to fall annex. The order in which we fight these guys right here doesn't really matter. What does matter is that these are the initial guys we try to fight. There we go. I'll peace out Provence by making them end their alliance with Naples. Just like that, my war with Siena is done, and of course I'm going to be full annexing them and taking all their money. Like I said, you're doing this with whichever nation you're fighting right here, just like that. And now because I have this province, I can go ahead and claim Naples via the sea tile. This is the ideal opening. I did not restart any amount of times to get this, it just sometimes happened. And I actually don't recommend restarting even if you can't do this. It's really not that much beneficial to warrant restarting. Either way, if you've done this, you're going back home and getting ready to fight Naples immediately. However, if you fought someone else, you're chilling until you can get the opportunity to fight someone else. Now that this war is over, I allied France and Austria like I said I would. France is calling me into their war with England. Of course I'm gonna accept you're gonna do the same, and you're not really gonna do anything. If the Pope rivals you right at the start, like they did rival me, of course you're gonna wanna go ahead and buy indulgence for your sins once they excommunicate you, or before they excommunicate you. I am gonna take out a loan to do that, it is always worth it. It's absolutely horrible being excommunicated. There we go, now that I'm back home, I'll immediately declare on Naples right here before they get another ally. And there we go, there's my declaration on Naples. Hopefully a bunch of you were lucky enough to get this start as well. And now the renaissance has spawned and at the same time I finally defeated Naples. You can defeat Naples by yourself even if they have a small ally or two. In my game I have called in Milan to make things a little bit easier and that's how I defeated them a bit faster. But at this point the renaissance has also spawned. When it spawns in your game hopefully you'll be lucky enough to spawn it yourself. In my game I wasn't, it spawned in Luca. Either way we do need to embrace it right here for this mission which of course we will. But after you defeat Naples it is time to piece them out and what I recommend taking from Naples in this war is only the province of Naples itself. You can take one more province or something like that or two more but it will prevent us from expanding faster. So you know we don't want to take more than we need to because we want to take out these guys up here as well. So what I recommend that you do is just take Naples right here and then get war reps and all of their money just like that. Your first war if you did it at all with Naples is done and if they don't get PU'd again by Castile or Aragon or someone like that of course we are gonna fight them again. Once it's time for your tier 2 government reform as Florence, I do think you have a couple of options. You can either go with republicanism, of course, for more yearly republican tradition, although it's not really going to be that much of a problem since we're only re-electing every 12 years. Then you could also go with meritocratic rule, the main benefit of this being the burgers loyalty and the plus 5% goods produced along with female generals. And of course, we have virtues of politeia right here, which gives us plus 10% national manpower. 
and nobility loyalty. So, if you're sort of more focusing on making money this campaign, I do recommend meritocratic rule. However, if you have trouble managing your manpower and if you want to be more aggressive, I recommend virtues of Politeia. If you want to be sort of balanced, then take republicanism for that republican tradition. In my game right here, I am going to go with this one right here. Of course, you could swap at any time. Once the renaissance does spawn, no matter if you spawned it or not, I do recommend activating the encouraged development state edict in your capital state of Tuscan right here and developing Florence just twice up to 30 development. You can use whichever points you want, whatever you have the most in. There we go. That ticks off the age ability for a high development city. And it'll spread super fast, so no need to develop further. You're already in Italy. Of course, I'm gonna dev a little bit more just because it's so devastated. After you've gotten your first one or two wars done, and keep in mind, by 1451, some of you may not have fought a single war. That has happened in a lot of my playthroughs, where you're only gonna do your first war after about 10 years, after you find the relevant nation to declare on, after you curry favors with your allies. So don't sweat about when you're doing what I'm doing. Either way, once you wrap up a war or two, and once aggressive expansion is high-ish with these guys, meaning if we take one or two more provinces, we're gonna get coalition, it's time to chill a little bit and improve relations without rage countries before looking for other opportunities to declare. After you embrace the renaissance, make sure to sell it to someone to make some money. Of course, after you do that, you will also be able to take the mission Florentine Renaissance, where we gain even more advisor discounts and plus one yearly prestige. Look at how cheap the advisors are right now. And of course, if you have more than 90 Republican tradition, you'll be able to take the mission reaffirm civic values for just some stability. Very simple. After you pay off your initial burger loans, make sure to go ahead and take new burger loans and start constructing buildings immediately. That is going to be our main focus during peacetime, and of course, start off by building marketplaces in the center of trade and estuary provinces. As we can see in my game right here, right after I took Naples from Naples, Aragon declared on them and re PU'd them again. This is most likely what's going to happen in your games as well. If you fought Naples as well, either the Pope is going to come in and take a bunch of land, and I'm talking a bunch, or Aragon is going to come in and take a bunch of land, or Aragon is going to re PU them, or if you don't fight them for quite a long time, Castile will come in and PU them or conquer them after they've taken Aragon. This is completely normal. We really just wanted to nab this province right here. The rest we'll worry about later. And by the way, after you set up your alliances, ideally they would look like this. France, Milan, Austria, and the Pope. It's just in my game, I haven't gotten the Pope yet. He is still rivaling me, but I am pretty close to making him like me. During peacetime, I'm focusing on improving relations with outraged countries and with allies. And as you can see as Florence, money is pretty much not a problem after the initial 10 years. I've taken care of Siena and Naples here, and I'm already making money at full army maintenance. It's not that bad. Right now, I'm just helping out Milan in some war versus man. But more importantly, once you had Admin Tech 5, which will be super soon as Florence, hopefully Cosimo is still alive for you guys, and you'll be way ahead in tech, you will be able to take your first idea group and ask Florence what better first idea group rather than innovative ideas. Now listen, these aren't that popular in the pro or playing optimally you for community, but a lot of players, myself included, absolutely love innovative ideas, especially as Florence. Now you also might think that it isn't optimal, and this is in quotation marks, to take an admin idea group first, since it will slow you down to getting to admin tech seven and unlocking your second idea group, but trust me, as Florence, the amount of points generation is insane and that won't be a problem at all and with innovative ideas points generation will be even more insane the prestige decay is super helpful for a nation such as us along with the innovativeness gain the tech discount along with the tech discount we already have is going to be excellent the possible advisors is great the institution spread and institution embracement cost are awesome along with the monthly war exhaustion monthly splendor plus one free policies and even more advisor discounts along with the tons of advisor discounts we already have also they have really good policies with other idea groups that we're going to be taking later on such as even cheaper advisors with plutocratic ideas for example even more cheaper advisors with diplo ideas, trade efficiency with trade ideas, leader siege and siege ability with offensive and infantry combat ability plus 15% with quality. All of those are super, super strong. So I definitely recommend innovative ideas for a typical super fun Florence playthrough. If you don't want to get this, if you're absolutely an innovative ideas hater, then in that case, I recommend opening up with something like Pluto or Trade, for example. But either way, I still recommend innovative ideas. If you don't take it for your first idea group, you're really not going to get the benefits. So don't take these later on only for your first idea group. 
Once a little bit of time has passed and aggressive expansion has cooled down, you are free to continue your conquests versus the initial nations around you that I mentioned at the start, Siena, Luca, Bologna, Ferrara, whoever is the easiest to fight, go ahead and fight them. I just got done helping Milan conquer Mantua, now I'm helping France fight Burgundy. Either way, I'm going to be declaring on Bologna right here. They're the next easiest target for me, and because they're allied to the Pope in this same war, I'm going to make the Pope unrival me so we can have good relations with him. If you do end up fighting the Pope indirectly, of course, by fighting some of their allies, make sure to make him unrival you if you're also in this situation that I'm in. So, there we go. There's my declaration Bologna. I'll call in Austria to make this war a little quicker. I do not recommend taking any land from the Pope until we're absolutely ready to form Italy. There we go, my war here is done. I'm only going to make the Pope unrival me. I'm not taking anything else from him. And just like that, I'm also going to full annex Bologna. There we go. That's my third war done. We're still focusing on this initial region. For your tier 3 government reform, I recommend either frequent elections or consolidation of power. When our term length is 12 years, just like it is with the Italian Signoria, it really doesn't matter if you get it one year shorter or one year longer. It really doesn't make that big of a difference, if at all. So, what I recommend slightly more is consolidation of power, simply because re-elections will reduce a state influence by 10%. I don't recommend this one or this one, so go with one of these two, but really, the tier 3 ones don't make a huge difference. Like I said, with this one, only for the re-elections reducing estate influence by 10%. We don't care about the max absolutism or length of election term modifiers. Now that I've re-elected that guy, the noble's loyalty has gone above 60, which means I can take this mission right here, handpick bureaucrats, which gives us 100 admin points. You're not really focusing on this mission, you'll get it done at a certain point anyway, when the nobles are more than 60 loyal. And if you don't have any corruption, you'll also be able to take the mission Immaculate Government for Diplorep and Foreign Spy Detection for 20 years. Now around this point, about 10 or 15 years after the game starts, you will need to take a look at two other possible areas of expansion, and that is these Provence provinces down here, which of course we border Toulon via the sea tail, so we can actually spy on Provence, and of course Venice. Now let me get to Provence first, as you all know, France does break their alliance with them at the start in every single game in these latest two patches, which means Provence might be with weak-ish allies during this point. Now if in your game you've arrived to here, based basically conquered either just one or all four of your initial starting neighbors, you can look this way. And if Provence is weak enough or if you're strong enough, you can go ahead and spy on this province and go ahead and fight them. In my game, of course, I can't do that. Provence already doesn't exist. These two provinces have been taken by the Pope. This one right here has been taken by France. So that's out of the question for me. But another area of expansion you also need to look into is Venice right here. Now, both of your allies, Milan and Austria, most of the time they are willing to help you out versus Venice. But what you should really look out for is this, Venice fighting the Ottomans. And as we all know, this always happens because Venice guarantees Albania. So the Ottomans will eventually declare on Albania and Venice will be dragged into this war. Additionally, in my game right here, Venice is also excommunicated, which means we gain a lot less aggressive expansion for provinces that we border if we want to fight them. And they've allied Burgundy, but that is great because Burgundy is currently dying to France. So this is absolutely the perfect opportunity for me to go ahead and declare on Venice. And that's precisely what I'll be doing. Even though aggressive expansion is a little high-ish with some of these guys right here, it doesn't matter because we'll be using the excommunicated ruler CB. So, whenever you have the opportunity, after the initial 10 or 15 years, to either fight Provence for these provinces right here, or Venice for any provinces over here while they're fighting the Ottomans, go ahead and take that opportunity right away. So, I'll go ahead and declare for the conquest of Ferrara right here with the excommunicated ruler CB, and I'll call in Milan. I would be able to call in Austria as well, but I don't have favors. Either way, it's not a big deal since they're already fighting the Ottomans. So there's my next declaration. You're doing this, fighting Provence or Venice, after you've wrapped up one to all four of the wars versus your initial starting neighbors. Or maybe you also fought Naples as well. Of course, once 1460 hits, the Shadow Kingdom event will fire in the HRE, where basically Italian nations decide to leave or stay in the HRE, or Austria decides whether to let us go. Of course, we'll get a pop-up later. Of course, if you're allied to Austria, you will be staying in the HRE if another nation is going to stay in the HRE. So let's take a look at this. Austria, in Italy, they're only allied to me, which means none of these other guys will be staying in the HRE. They also haven't made anyone else a free city right here, which means that they would also stay in the HRE. So if there are free cities or other Austrian allies in Italy, in the HRE, you'll be staying as well. If there are no other nations that will stay, 
you will leave as well. For your first stage ability, you should of course take Justified Wars. And there we go, as we can see, all other Italian nations have left the HRE. Check this when you get this second pop-up. And of course, the Empire will no longer concern us if everyone else has already left. This will make Austria dislike us slightly, but definitely not enough for them to break their alliance with us. So there we go. After 1460, if you're planning to fight HRE guys in Italy, you've stayed in the HRE. If not, you've left. The reason we're leaving primarily during this point is because we don't want to get stuck to a duchy rank later on once we're powerful enough to become a kingdom. Of course, as Florence, you'll be maxing out on points very often during your campaign, and of course, you're going to be doing a lot of developing. If you don't know about developing, pretty much the way to do it is by putting these points into whatever is the most relevant for their category. For example, this is glass, a high value trade good, so we do want to develop it in diplo points primarily. This is, for example, grain. It's not that valuable, even though it's a little bit higher than normal right now. But what we want to put into here is mill points because this is related to manpower. Same with livestock. So generally, these two I would develop with mill points, the glass province with diplo points, and these wine provinces, well, with whatever we have, since it's not a really that relevant trade good for anything specific. It's just relevant to unrest, whereas the glass, it's good for production efficiency and it's a high value trade good. And then the livestock is good for supply limit. And the grain is also good for land force limit. So with these extra diplo points that I have right now, I'm going to develop Siena a couple of times. And there we go. Now I've defeated Venice. Once you've defeated Venice as well, you're going to take as much provinces from them as you're comfortable with. These two provinces, as we can see right here, the excommunicated ruler CB ones, they're not giving us that much aggressive expansion at all. So what I'm going to do is take one additional province. Of course, I could take a couple more right here and a coalition wouldn't still really form, but that will slow us down from expanding into other areas. So pretty much if we take more now, we'll take less later. So why not take medium now? and medium later. So these are the three provinces I'm going to go for. I'm not going to give Milan their course back. We don't want to make Milan or whichever our northern Italian ally is too powerful because sooner or later we'll break our alliance with them and we'll fight them as well. So that's why I'm not giving anything back to Milan. I'm just taking these three provinces. I'm going to make them end their alliance with Burgundy. I'm going to get war reps and I'm going to get money. And there we go. That's my war with Venice done. You should have taken something similar no matter when you're fighting them. And hopefully, of course, you'll spawn faceting in Siena. And now it'll produce gems. A little tip here. I know I'm not the most optimal player, but this is some of the most optimal things you can do in EU4. When you see this red pop up right here, right? So when it's red like this, it means time is ticking until you're able to gain innovativeness from taking the tech ahead of time. So you would probably want to take tech right now, specifically Miltech, as we can see time is running out for it in order to gain innovativeness, but it's still 20% more expensive. But as we can see, we only have a 309 days left, which means we can wait till 1465 right here in order to get it and still gain innovativeness. So what I'm going to do in my game right here is wait until next year where it's not 20% more expensive, but only 10% more expensive and still get it while gaining innovativeness. As we can see, the Diplotech one isn't ticking yet, so we're good to wait. But generally, you do want to take tech ahead of time as Florence for that innovativeness gain. There we go. Now it's January 1st, 1465. This is still right here. We have 13 days left to take Miltech. And as we can see now, it's only 10% more expensive. So that's why I'll be taking it now. And just like that, we've gotten six more units and we're at tech six. You will be ahead of time in tech for most of your campaign as Florence. But I'm still not taking Diplotech. This is still yellow right here, which means we have plenty of time left. Of course, once it turns red, I'll try and do the same trick where we wait for the next year. Right now, I've just taken new burger loans, and when you have more than 500 ducats, you'll be able to take the mission reform the Monty. It gives us a reduced inflation cost, minus 10%, and yearly inflation reduction, plus 0.1. Decent missions. All of these missions on this side of the mission tree focus on stuff like this, giving you minor bonuses that are temporary and stuff like that. This is the conquest branch down here. Of course, we're still focusing on building buildings during this point. I've already built marketplaces in the three centers of trade that I have. Now I'll build one in the estuary in Ferrara right here. And now I'll focus on churches in every province that gives me more than 0.1 ducat per month after I build them. After that, it's production building time or army building time. And you may have noticed that I have built up my fleet a little bit by this point in the game. I have five light ships protecting trade in Genoa and this 10 galley 10 transport stack right here that'll do some battles and help me move troops around. Nothing too crazy for now, we are over force limit. 
Of course, don't forget to lower autonomy from time to time. We're not really conquering that much, so you won't be clicking this on 50 provinces. But whenever 1460s hit, make sure to lower autonomy everywhere. Do this every 10 to 15 years. As we can see, money is absolutely great as Florence. We haven't really expanded that much. Only 5 or 6 provinces by this point, depending on everyone's game. And I'm already making about 15 ducats a month with armies up and drilling. If I activate my forts, it's still not bad. About 12 ducats a month perfectly good perfectly normal in my game about 20 years after i started the game i can finally ally the pope and there we go eventually you will be able to make him not your rival and you do want to ally him like i said we want to have excellent relations with the pope throughout the entirety of the game at least until we start conquering him right before we're ready to form italy and by the way, I'm not fighting Genoa, just helping out Milan once again. In my game, I can notice right now that Ferrara right here has been left allyless for some reason. They're no longer allied to Aragon, nor are they allied to Luca, which actually I would have liked them to be allied to Luca, so we can take them down in one more. But nevertheless, it is time for me to declare on them, even though aggressive expansion still hasn't chilled that much with a lot of the Italian guys. But it's a great opportunity. So there we go. I'm continuing my conquest versus Ferrara to take the province of Modena. They already lost Ferrara from Venice later on, which I took. So there we go. There's my next war. Around this point, 20-ish years into the game, we're still focusing on any leftover nations out of our initial neighbors. And of course, the two additional areas of expansion that I said to look into, these provinces from Provence and Venice, if you can. So those are the regions we're focusing on right now. In your game, you may have already fought Genoa for some reason, for example, by this point, and taken this. You may not have fought any of your initial neighbors right here, and you may have instead fought someone like Provence first. It doesn't matter when and in what order you fight these guys, it does matter that those are your initial targets. And there we go, super quick and easy war versus Ferrara done, and I'm gonna be full annexing them. For your naval doctrine, while you still have nations in Italy left to fight, I do recommend taking galley combat. After that, after you take care of the entirety of Italy, you can totally swap to merchant navy for ship trade power. Right now, Milan broke their alliance with me. I guess they want my provinces. Yes, they do. This is completely normal. Don't worry if one of these guys breaks their alliance with you, whoever you valid in northern Italy. We were going to break our alliance with them either way, because we do, of course, want to expand here. I just normally recommend doing that after you've already expanded a little over here yourself. Now that a little bit of time has passed, it's time for me to continue my wars once again. Once again versus the same nations that I already mentioned. And this time I'm going to be declaring on Luca right here, who's allied to Savoy. And I'm going to call in France. And in this war, I'm going to make Savoy get rid of a couple of alliances here. Because they're allied to both Aragon and Castile, which makes it really hard to fight them. So I want to make it easier for myself later on. So there's my declaration on Luca with France. And let's dismantle Savoy a bit too. Of course, make sure to unfocus from Diplo as soon as you can. If you have an inflation reduction guy and a trade efficiency guy, you are eligible for the Radical Reforms event where you can gain 200 Diplo and Admin points if you fire those guys. What I recommend doing is firing them, getting the event and the points, and then of course getting the guys back because they are really good advisors. I may have just wasted a lot of Diplo points there. Honestly, I didn't notice how many Diplo points I had, but either way, there's the event shown off for you guys. For your tier 4 government reform, I recommend lands for the church. This will help us have even better relations with the Pope, and it'll help us with these bonuses in the papacy down here. There we go, I'm gonna make Savoy brick their lands with Aragon and Castile, and I'm also gonna humiliate them. We want to take that off eventually as well. And there's Luca full annex. Now once you hit admin tech 6, I just did it a year or two ago, and make sure to do it after you've taken this, which will unlock this and this, which means we have a 15% discount on tech, so that means take admin tech 6 after the third innovative idea. If you've opened up with innovative, you will have access to the production buildings, which you should start building right away in all the high value trade good provinces, and even your capital too. Now, once you've taken care of your initial neighbors over here, maybe fought Naples, that, like I said, this is only a possibility, and once you've pushed once, into Provence and into Venice, basically once you look a little bit like this, it is time to break your alliance with whoever you're allied to in Northern Italy and start possibly fighting them as well. Now in Northern Italy, in my game right here, Savoy, Milan and Venice are left. Milan has actually allied France, which makes it super annoying to fight them. So until I can make France break the alliance with them, I won't be able to fight them. So Venice is my other option. They are looking pretty easy right now, even though I have a truce. And then we have Genoa right here, who's allied to Aragon. That's of course annoying. Savoy, I have a truce with. So, I'm pretty much locked out of any expansion opportunities in my game. Naples has been re-PU'd, we don't want to fight the Pope, so you may come into a deadlock like this. It's honestly different in anyone's game. Dalmatia right here, they're definitely a possibility though, even though they're not in the region of Italy. Keep in mind, playing tall doesn't mean not expanding. 
It means focusing on the provinces that you already have to develop them optimally and make them good at what they're supposed to do. It doesn't mean you don't get to expand at all. It just means you don't expand mindlessly, you expand carefully and focus on developing the provinces after you've taken them. Then you expand some more. For your second age ability, I recommend Adaptive Combat Terrain for plus one combat bonus in the terrain of our capital, which of course our capital is hills and there are lots of hills in the regions we're going to fight in. So definitely very useful. Now, I just mentioned how annoying it is for me to fight anyone in my surroundings because Genoa is elect to Aragon, Savoy, I have a truce with them, Milan is elect to France, I have a truce with Venice, and so on. But what I just noticed right now, and that's why I spied on Aragon right here, is that France would help me versus Aragon and England would not help Aragon, which means it is definitely viable to fight them. So that is going to be my next war. In this war versus Aragon right here, or whenever you fight Aragon or Castile that has spewed Aragon, whichever one of these guys right here, the goal in your initial war is going to be to take some provinces down here to release Sicily from so we can reconquer their cores. Maybe do the same over here with Sardinia, if not just conquer these provinces yourself. Of course, to take provinces over here if they've re would Naples or conquered provinces from Naples. And if you want to expand that way, maybe take provinces over here to release Valencia and Catalonia from so we can reconquer their course as well so that's what you're going to be doing in your war versus aragon or versus the iberian union so there's my declaration i'm going to declare for cesari right here and i'm going to be doing some of the things that i said you should do Sooner or later in the game, you will gain the Pazzi Conspiracy event right here, where we can choose this first option to hang them from the Palazzo and lose one stability, and the estates gain a little bit of crownland. But next time we re elect our ruler or elect one of his relatives, it will not cost us any Republican tradition. The other option is to lose two stability, lose your current ruler, which most likely is going to be a Medici if you've been re electing their relatives, and instead we gain that Jacopo de Pazzi guy. I recommend choosing this first option right here, lose the stab, let the estate have a little bit of crownland but this is the better option and once you defeat aragon or castile and aragon whoever you've been fighting for some of these provinces that i mentioned earlier here's what i recommend doing first i recommend taking the province of trapani right here since you will gain the least aggressive expansion for that where we can release sicily from to reconquer the rest of their cores later on then I also recommend getting all of these provinces right here for yourself. Then you can also take some provinces over here to release Catalonia and Valencia from. I'm going to take these two since those give me the least aggressive expansion. And then I'm also going to take these two provinces right here in order to gain a bigger foothold in southern Italy. It says a coalition will form, but won't really because there are only two nations. So then I'll also get war reps and money. So everything that I've taken right here, you can take all of this or some of it. This is sort of what your initial peace deal should look like versus Aragon or Aragon and Castile or Aragon and Naples or Castile, Aragon and Naples, whoever controls these provinces that we're focusing on in this war. And there we go. That's that war done. Once again, just like the war versus Naples, this is only a possible war that you might do in your first 50 years. It's not something you strictly need to focus on. What we strictly need to focus on is the things up here. Of course, now I am going to be releasing the nation of Sicily, just like that, along with the nation of Catalonia, just like that, and the nation of Valencia. For example, in my tall Florence slash Italy playthrough right here, what I'm going to be focusing on is the entire region of Italy, along with the entirety of the Genoa, Venice, Valencia, and Ragusa trade nodes. Let's say that's my goal for this campaign. Pretty good for a tall focus playthrough where we're going to be developing those provinces, building the relevant buildings, and having pretty fun wars without blobbing out too much. Of course, everyone's goal is different, so if you're going for a Roman Empire run or something like that, stuff like this is still really helpful for reconquests later on. And just in time, because the Iberian wedding just happened right as I ended this war, so that helped us not fight Castile, which is very nice. Either way, with France on our side, I would have defeated Castile easily, but try and do something like this before the Iberian wedding happens. Of course, if you pop out a bunch of subjects or acquire them in any other way, maybe through diplovisalization, make sure to give the nobility strong duchies. Playing Tallis Florence is so good, after only about 20 to 30 years in game, you can already run level 2 advisors and still make a ton of money. In my game a couple of months ago, I noticed that Herzegovina was right here ally less, and Ragusa has just declared on them. This is a perfect opportunity for me to declare on Herzegovina right here and actually vassalize them if possible in order to fight Ragusa as well, who as you all know is guaranteed by the Ottomans. Even if we can't vassalize them and make Ragusa fight us, it'll still be a nice province to take over here and release Dalmatia from, which did exist just a few months ago before Austria annexed them, and reconquer their cores as well. Pretty much, there's an opportunity to do in the Balkans, in the Ragusa trade node, the same thing that we're doing over here to Aragon, releasing a bunch of nations that we can reconquer their cores later on. It's 
is definitely a possibility with Serbia as well, as you can see right here, or even Byzantium and Bulgaria, if you want to go that far. So that's exactly what I'll do now. I'll declare in Herzegovina for the conquest of this province. I'll try and vassalize them to fight Ragusa as well, but if I can't, I'll just annex them and release Dalmatia from there. So there we go. There's my next war started. Once you've pretty much exhausted your easy war capabilities in Italy, you do need to look to expand in other regions around Italy, maybe like something I mentioned, if it is of course your goal at all to play that far. Once you hit admin deck 7, it will be time for your second idea group, and for your second idea group, I do feel like you have a couple of options. The first one that I personally recommend the most, I think, is plutocratic ideas. Now, these are really good for republics. Of course, we gain the mercenary discount, along with the mercenary discount we already have in our national ideas, which is going to make mercs very, very cheap, even if you don't play with them that often. Then, of course, the national rest and morale of armies is great, definitely useful. The monthly reform progress is awesome. The merchant is very helpful, along with the goods produced, super, super important modifier the dev discount and caravan power is very nice as well along with the manpower recovery speed and provincial trade power and burgers loyalty so plutocratic ideas are very good ideas all around the additional advisor discount that we're going to gain with innovative along with the prestige is very nice as well additional options if you don't want to go with pluto i recommend quality this will buff up your army and navy even more we are playing with navies too keep in mind and of course the policy with innovative is super super strong for plus 15 percent infantry combat ability we're going to be taking quality later on either way so if you want to take them now or later it's totally up to you and then a non-mill idea group option i have for you is trade ideas with innovative we gain even more trade efficiency and interest per annum and of course you already know all the benefits to trade ideas so those are my three recommendations for your second idea group pluto quality or trade it's totally up to you which one you take now we're going to be taking all of them later either way so it's totally up to you i'm going to be taking pluto ideas for my second idea group there we go, Ragusa has completely eaten up Herzegovina, so there's no option to vassalize them and then fight Ragusa without fighting the Ottomans. So what I'm going to do is simply full annex Herzegovina right here. And now I'm immediately going to go ahead and release Dalmatia, just like that. These are the cores that they have, and I can even ask for Austria by using favors right here to give back some of Dalmatia's cores to them. Let's see if we have the possibility. There's the return core province option in the favors tab right there, and we actually can get both split and Istria right here. Of course, I'm going to take split since it's connected there we go just like that and i have 28 more favors with austria which means i can also ask them for istria back just like that so there's two provinces right there very decent provinces by the way back for free try and look for opportunities like this after you've built up most of the relevant buildings don't forget to upgrade your centers of trade as well once a little bit of time has passed, of course, you're continuing your conquests in the same directions we've already been expanding in. By this point, there'll only be a few nations left in Italy, mostly some guys that have consolidated regions like Milan over here. They've blobbed out quite a lot, and it's Venice that's left. Naples is, of course, viewed by Aragon, so expansion opportunities in Italy will be quite limited. So, at this point, you're taking what you can get. In my game right here, the Ottomans have just declared on Venice, which means it's a perfect time for me to declare on them for my second time. Unfortunately, now they're not excommunicated anymore, but either way, Austria and the Pope will join, so why not go ahead and fight them and take one to three more provinces from them. It'll take you about three or four wars to fully chop down Venice, even if no one else fights them. So, there we go. There's my declaration for Verona. For your tier 5 government reform, aside from your standard options right here, which you all know and love, we do have one that's very, very cool for our gameplay such as Florence. Condottieri Contracts. Now this one, it makes mercenary companies not cost any army professionalism, which is actually really, really powerful. But get this too, it also gives us minus 33% mercenary cost along with plus 5% merc discipline. The possible Condottieri thing, it isn't relevant at all. So, not only will merc companies not cost us any army professionalism if we take this, but along with the minus 15% merc maintenance from here, the minus 20% merc cost from here, and the other minus 33% merc cost from here makes mercenaries absolutely dirt cheap for your playthrough as Florence. So, if you've taken Pluto, I definitely recommend taking this, and I definitely recommend utilizing mercenaries, since you are going to be so rich either way. But, if for some reason you don't want to take this, then I recommend one of of these four right here all of which are pretty standard and pretty relevant for your gameplay i most recommend sustained discipline but it's absolutely a mistake to not take this one as we can see due to that Pazzi conspiracy event earlier on it doesn't cost us any republican tradition because of the option we chose so i'm just gonna re-elect this guy of course 
And now that my second war with Venice is done, here's what I'm going to be taking from them. I'm going to take the province of Verona, which I declared for, and then I'm also going to take these two provinces up here, because Milan has also declared a reconquest on Venice, and I don't want Venice to grow any larger. If this wasn't the case, I'd probably take these, if I'm being honest, but there we go, I'm taking these three right here. Once again, a coalition is not a problem, only Venice and Milan are mad. I won't be taking any money or warps right now, since I want to fight them as soon as possible, when my truce with them is up. At this point, I can finally upgrade to a kingdom. And by the way, earlier when I had some spare diplo points, like I've been having the entirety of the campaign, I did promote Romagnol in Neapolitan culture. Right now, 40 years have passed, and I'm finally back up to above 30 crownland. Make sure to seize whenever all of these guys are above 50 loyalty. And of course, don't forget to lower autonomy. Very important. Right now, I finally have enough favors with France after I helped them out in a war versus Burgundy to make them end their alliance with Milan. So really, sometimes it's just about being patient. So that's exactly what I'm going to do now. I'm going to use favors to make France break their alliance with Milan. Just like that, they will accept. There we go. And now I can finally go ahead and fight Milan. I've been waiting so long. They have grown too powerful. It is what it is. Hopefully, you will have fought these guys sooner and you won't need three or four wars to take them down whether them or Savoy. Either way, there's my declaration on Milan for the conquest of Parma. We'll finally get to accomplish the mission Tuscan birthright by owning all provinces in Tuscany and Emilia-Romagna, which will give us further claims on stuff we may have already conquered. Yes, we are expanding differently to our mission tree. That's simply due to the nature of alliances and alliance chains over in Italy. But there we go. There's my declaration on Milan for the conquest of Parma. I'll just go ahead and white piece the Pope here. While I'm in this war, I noticed that someone popped out Aquilia from Venice right here, it was probably Milan, and what I'm doing is doing all of the things for them to accept a Diplo vassalization. If you can avoid fighting someone, why not do it? I'll probably be able to do the same thing with Saluzzo. Yes, I will have six vassals by that point, but come on, let's save some aggressive expansion. So, whenever you want to Diplo vassalize someone, ally them, guarantee them, royal marry them, send them a gift, offer them mill access, influence them, give them subsidies, and you'll get them up to 190 in no time. I'm about to wrap up my war with Milan, I'm also helping out Austria in this war with Bohemia here, but I just want to point out how cheap advisors are just barely 50 years into the game as Florence. Look at this half cost level 2 guy, 0.33 ducats a month. This full cost level 2 guy, 0.65 ducats a month. If I promote him to a tier 3 advisor, he'll only be 1.46 ducats a month. Extremely cheap, I finished Innovative, so we got the advisor discount from here. I finished Pluto, so we got the advisor discount from the policy right here. So let's actually take a look at the modifiers right now. There's advisor cost right there, minus 71% cheaper advisors just regularly along with the minus 15% we have from these privileges right here that's a minus 85% reduction in advisor costs only 50 years into the game and the Santa Maria del Fiore is not even upgraded to tier 3 which will give us another 10% on top of that so those are simply insanely insanely cheap advisors there we go I'm immediately gonna promote this guy to a tier 3 guy, promote this guy to a tier 3 guy, hire this level 1 morale guy so I can promote him to tier 3 and just look at this. These are full cost advisors by the way, not half cost advisors. If I promote him to tier 4, that's 260. As much as a level 2 100% cost advisor was only about 10 years ago. So that's exactly what I'm going to do with these guys. There we go. I'm even going to take out loans to show that off. Tier 4 advisors in 1491 for 2.63 ducats a month. And there we go, my war with Milan is pretty much done, since I'm only going to take these three provinces. As there's less nations left over in Italy, you're going to be becoming more aggressive, since less of them can join a coalition against you. So that's my war with Milan done, my first one. I'm also going to get war reps and all of their money. And there we go, I've acquired Parma, Mantua, and Genoa. After you take over all of Tuscany and Emilia-Romagna, you'll be able to take the mission Tuscan Birthright, which gives us further perma claims on Lombardy and the Po Valley these areas right here. After that, if you're a kingdom, you'll also be able to take the mission Dreams of Grandeur. Right now, I just lowered inflation to zero as well to be able to take the mission Medici Bank Ledgers. It gives us an interest per annum, minus 0.5 and minus 20% state maintenance. Something else that you should look to do when you have super cheap advisors like this, like me, is complete the mission commission the Mona Lisa, where you need one of a level 3 philosopher, natural scientist, or artist. 
To complete it, I'm just gonna hire this philosopher right here, promote him to a level 4 guy, and now they're even cheaper, 1.98 ducats a month, absolutely insane. And there we go, there's commission to Mona Lisa, even cheaper tech, and even cheaper ideas, and we've influenced the church by having a cardinal, there's 20 prestige as well. Super, super nice missions and modifiers once you start snowballing as Tuscany. Look, there's level 5 advisors in 1492 for 3.10 ducats a month. What else do you want me to say? And we're still making a ton of money. I don't know with which other country you can gain this insane of a monarch point generation this early in the game. Maybe only Ming rivals Florence with this. Now that my relations with Aquilia are good enough, I'll go ahead and diplo vassalize them. Sure, it's not a super high development province, only 11 dev, but it would be annoying to conquer them. So why not vassalize them? Simple. Now I've got pretty good relations with Saluzzo too, I'll diplo vassalize them as well. Sure, these guys do take up a diplomatic slot, but we're making so much points that it's completely irrelevant that we're only two relations over our relations limit. So there we go, six vassals just like that, four of which we can reconquer their cores, these two guys down here, Sicily, Dalmatia, and two guys that are far away from us that we can't fight right away, so why not save them for later, and annex them super fast once we gain a border with them. Trying to look for opportunities like this, by this point you may find one to three of these guys left around somewhere in Italy that they'll pop out or that you haven't fought yet. Once there's only a couple of nations left over in Italy and when you're basically left fighting the same guys over and over again, maybe a big Milan or something like that in my case, there's no need to tell these diplomats to establish communities anymore since those one to three guys are the only guys that are mad this whole time. So you can simply rearrange your merchants once again to a more optimal scenario. For example, I have my third merchant here transferring from Ragusa to Genoa. He's supposed to be transferring to Genoa. Then I'm going to tell one guy to transfer from Valencia to Genoa as well. For your tier 6 government reform, I recommend either the presidential system for even more institution embracement cost, or if you want to be funny, attorney general. Now, this means that we won't be able to seize Crownland, but it's not going to be a problem if we're already over 30% Crownland, which by the time you get to your tier 6 government reform, realistically you should be. And of course, that doesn't mean that these guys can't lose Crownland anymore, because we won't be able to seize. They'll still lose Crownland when we conquer land and when we lower autonomy and when we develop provinces as well so it's really not a problem if you can't seize additionally that's not the only thing advisors also increase 0.02 yearly republican tradition per level which means these guys right here the level five guys they give me three republican tradition per year which is absolutely insane if my math is good i'm not really good at math but also cost of advisors with a ruler's culture are minus 15 percent which means this half cost a level 2 Diplo guy that I hired, who's a level 5 guy now, is going to be even cheaper because he's Tuscan, just like this guy right here. However, if you're scared of not seizing land anymore, you can go with the presidential system. I'm going to go with this one. I love cheaper advisors. And actually, I don't think my advisors can be any cheaper. This is the bottom price. <laughs> Either way, now that aggressive expansion has calmed down a bit and I've made some additional claims, I'll be continuing my wars by cleaning up some minor nations that are easy to fight, such as Genoa here, for example. You're doing the same, fighting whoever is left over in Italy, except, of course, the Pope, and if you have an opportunity to retake some of your subjects as scores, then you're doing that as well. Now, once you've built up most of the relevant buildings, you will start farming money real quick and you will need to upgrade your monuments as well. Now, I'll speak more about the monuments when we do the outro, of course, and the final tips are mentioned, but for now, I am going to upgrade the Royal Paris of Caserta up to tier 1. Almost all of the monuments in Italy that we're going to conquer are very good for us. There we go, my war with Genoa is done, and apparently I'm going to be full annexing them. Of course, whenever you unlock the courthouses, GovCap won't be a problem, but it may be a problem later on. So, of course, as always, I recommend building a courthouse in every single province. I know I didn't mention this, but buildings are really cheap as Florence as well. And yes, you will be deving with admin points as well. Look, we are 7.5 years ahead of time and technology. No idea groups are being worked on and we're almost maxed out on every single point right here. Of course, you would think, well, Hawk, you're not conquering enough, obviously, if you're so stacked on points. But the goal for this campaign that I'm playing and that probably you'll be playing as well as Florence isn't really just to conquer. Like I said earlier, it's about conquering and making sure the provinces look like they're supposed to look. High development in the respective categories, the relevant buildings built, and so on. So yes, I am doing deving even with tax. As we can see, Padua right here is ultra cheap to dev. Look, it's already at 12 dev, but it costs 
just 29 points to develop. And look at this. You can, of course, push this even further. If you activate Encourage Development, now it's 23 points. If you dev it up just a little bit, just like that, it's back up to 29. But if you expand Infrastructure, it goes down to 21. So it's absolutely insanely dirt cheap to just bump up provinces as much as you want to. And look, without any effort at all, this is now a 30 development province for no reason at all. It does produce paper, sure, it's super, super nice, but you can do this with literally all of your provinces, especially the farmlands and cloth producing and center of trade provinces in Italy. So extremely, extremely cheap to develop. Make sure to do it. You'll be stacked on points the entirety of the game. Now my truce with Venice is up, so I will be declaring on them to take care of the final two provinces that they own. And don't worry if you're not conquering the same things that I'm conquering. Do whatever you have the opportunity to do. Some of you will have already owned this that I don't own, but you won't own anything over here. Completely normal, completely fine. Fight whoever you can and whoever looks the easiest. And there we go. There's my declaration on Venice. Now, colonialism has just spawned, and as you can see, I'm absolutely stacked on points. Once colonialism does spawn in your campaign as well, if you're stacked on points like this, just like me, then you can feel free to develop it right away. I'm gonna do it in Luca right here, because it is a center of trade, it is cloth producing, so it's super cheap, and even though it's already at 21 development, as we can see, it's absolutely dirt cheap. So there's encouraged development, now it's down to 32, I'm gonna expand infrastructure down to 24, and this is gonna be the easiest colonialism development developing of my life. Look how fast it's climbing. And we can probably do it one shot right here, not waste a ton of points. And Luca is absolutely going to be an insane dev province. There we go. 41. We spawned colonialism on the same month that it spawned in, and we're still absolutely stacked on points. I'm just showcasing some of the things that Florence is really, really good at. And you'll be doing these things. This is not necessarily a tip for the Florence guide. You can use it for any nation, but you'll especially use it on playing tall nations like this. And look, because we're so rich, I can immediately embrace colonialism as well. And there we go. We're the first nation in the world with colonialism before the one that even spawned it. Of course, make sure to use up those points if you're above a thousand. And there we go. Now I've defeated Venice and of course I am going to be full annexing them. Still no coalitions. Expansion is going just like it should. And there we go. That's my war with them done. I even got elected the papal controller now. Honestly, this run, I did have a little bit of luck, I'm not gonna lie, especially with the Naples game and with this uh, being elected the Curia controller because usually you won't get elected unless you catch it at absolutely the right time. But if you don't know, being the Curia controller is one of the best things in the game. Look at all of these bonuses that we get. Minus 10% stab cost, plus one diplomat, plus one yearly prestige, even more advisor discounts as if this wasn't already enough. And by the way, yes, everyone, this is the cheapest that it can be, 323 unless they're half off scripted. So the advisors literally couldn't get any cheaper. We have more than a 100% reduction in advisor costs. So that's absolutely insane. Along with the additional tech discount, the Diplo rep, the AE impact, the minus 10% Diplo annex cost, the closure loyalty, everything is absolutely perfect. It is very, very good if you can get elected the Curia controller as soon as possible, as soon as your game starts. But like I said, it's not really reliable. So that's why I like to spend my points on these things up here. Of course, once you do get elected the Curia controller, you will be able to choose a golden bull, choose whatever you want to. I'm going to get this dev cost one, for example. I'm not going to help these guys get colonialism faster all over Europe. And there we go. Once you do that, you will be able to take the mission control the church as well, where the next elected pope will have a special relationship with our country. You'll see what that's all about. And of course, after that, make sure to take the Academy of Brand mission as well. Super, super important. Absolutely vital mission right there. And there's Michelangelo, a skill 3 stab discount advisor who's 75% cheaper. Now, of course, at this point, it's not about the money at all, but I'm simply going to hire him simply because he's Michelangelo. You got Donatello right at the start. You can get Leonardo da Vinci as well. It looks like in my game, I haven't gotten him. But look at this, a level 5 advisor for 0.81 ducats a month. That's cheaper than a level 1 advisor in 1444. Of course, as the Curia controller, you can also excommunicate some nations, maybe if they haven't bought indulgence for their sins, and gain a lot less aggressive expansion when you fight them. And by another time colonialism spawns, your realm should look a little something like this. Basically, we start off as Florence in the initial starting provinces, 
kickstarted our mission tree right here by doing personal diplomacy and the Italian League, which enabled us to get some claims on Tuscany and Emilia Romagna, and we kickstarted our wars by declaring on one of our four neighbors, Siena, Luca, Bologna, or Ferrara, like I said at the start, preferably on Siena, so you could get a claim on Naples and try and fight them as soon as Aragon releases them. However, that is not something that you strictly need to do and is only a nice opportunity that you could potentially take advantage of. After that, after our initial one, two, three, or four wars versus our starting neighbors and possibly Naples, you should have looked to expand in the two other regions that I mentioned, possibly Provence over here, if there is an easy nation like Provence that you could fight over here, or Venice as well when you catch them off guard while they're fighting the Ottomans, and you may have expanded over in Venice or over in Provence. And of course, as you can see, I don't own anything in Provence, however, in your game, a bunch of you might have already expanded here if you had the opportunity, instead of expanding over here like I did. And after that, after taking care of our initial neighbors and maybe pushing into some of those regions, you should have further solidified your push over in northern Italy by breaking your alliance with whoever you were allied up here with, most likely Savoy or Milan, and starting to push into them and Venice and whichever nation is left over here, like Genoa, for example, as well. And by this point, you should own a sizable portion of northern Italy. Of course, we haven't expanded that much territorially, since as you know, the aggressive expansion is pretty high in these super high development provinces. But you should own most of northern Italy by this this point and if you did declare Naples you should have a couple of provinces down here as well and this is what we're looking like. Of course, depending on what your goals were, you may have also expanded in various regions outside of Italy like I have in my game. As you can see, when I fought Aragon, I took Valencia and Catalonia and released them, and now we have their course to reconquer over here. And I've also expanded right here. We have some cores for Dalmatia and another core that we can reconquer of theirs from Ragusa. Some of you may have even gotten Serbia as a vassal to reconquer all of their cores right here. Maybe Albania, Bulgaria, Byzantium, depending on what your goals are. But during the initial 50 years, we're mostly focusing on the region of Italy. Now, of course, even though we have been expanding quite a lot in this region, that isn't the only thing we were focusing on, because as I said at the start of the video, Florence is one of the best nations, if not the best nation, for playing tall in EU4, and you should have heavily focused on your economy and development and stacking various reduction modifiers. I'm gonna show you what my country looks like, by this point in the game and you should aim to have something similar. So this is my economy, I'm making about 73 ducats a month with forts and armies up. As you can see that is quite a lot and I have three level 5 advisors, this is how much I'm paying for each of them. This is the full price guy as you can see, advisors cannot be cheaper than this so we have all of the reduction modifiers stacked already. You should definitely run a level 5 advisors by this point in the game if you went with the ideas I went with but more on that later, these are all the marketplaces that I built pretty much in all of the center of trade and estuary provinces and even some not in center of trade and estuary provinces that gave me more than two trade power because I developed them. These are all the courthouses that I've built almost in every single province. Sure, we're not over GovCap, but it never hurts to build them. They don't take up a Diplo slot. You should have done something similar. These are all the workshops that I've built in all the high value trade good provinces and even more than that in provinces that I've developed. All of the churches that I've built, as we can see, I can build quite a lot more. I would put one down in each of these four provinces right here. A couple of army buildings here and there never hurt anyone. And that's pretty much that regarding the buildings. Additionally, all of my centers of trade have been upgraded to level 2. And I do plan upgrading additional ones to level 3, especially X right here since it is the most powerful province in the Genoa trade node, since it has a center of trade and an estuary, and then I plan to upgrade Venice as well to a tier 3 center of trade later on as well, and then maybe something in Valencia, something in Ragusa, it all depends on how many merchants you have, that's how many level 3 centers of trade you can have as well. This is what my army is looking like right now, 2447, pretty good according to the combat width, actually I should be putting down one more infantry regiment right there, 2547. This is my tiny little fleet right here, nothing too crazy, 10 galleys, 10 transports, just to move around and do maybe a little bit of battles, and then I have a light ship fleet protecting trade in Venice, and a light ship fleet protecting trade in Genoa. You should have something similar. And of course, you're going to be developing quite a lot. This is what my provinces are looking like. Pretty high def provinces. As we can see right here, Luca, Florence, Padua, all above 30 development. And so many provinces above 20 development. So many provinces above 10. And really, I have only two provinces that are, I would consider poor. Cagliari and Corsica right here, the two provinces that I've taken over from Genoa and Aragon, which of course do start off pretty poor, but because you're going to be stacked on points the entirety of the campaign, I'm making 16, 13, and 16 points right now per month, by the way, which is super, super powerful. 16 is the max you can make without focusing, of course, so you will be deving for the entirety of the campaign. I already said a little bit of tips about developing. 
And after this point, you're going to continue to expand in the same directions we've already been expanding in. You're going to continue to wrap up northern Italy right here. If you're only focusing on the region of Italy, of course, you're going to wrap up northern Italy. You're going to wrap up southern Italy. And then finally, once you have all of the necessary provinces to form Italy, and once you've completed all the Florentine missions right here, which, like I said, are very nice, super important, make sure to complete them. Then you're going to go ahead and fight the Pope last because, of course, we do want to have excellent relations with the Pope due to the papacy. And, of course, I forgot to mention, you may have also been elected the Curia controller super powerful but not something super reliable so after you take care of everyone in northern and southern Italy that's when you're going to turn your back on the Pope if you're doing a tall ish campaign like I am focusing on Valencia Genoa Venice and Ragusa you will start or continue to expand in those trade notes outside of the region of Italy as well and for a tall Florence playthrough honestly that's what I would stick with of course this won't run you until the end of the game you'll conquer it way before the end of the game so you could continue to push on further maybe get some trade companies and stuff in Tunis the choices are up to you but for a standard tall Florence to Italy playthrough this is what I would own right here of course everyone has different goals you could form Italy take their national ideas not stick with Tuscan ideas and you can continue to blob out because Italian ideas are really good for conquest so if you want to continue your tall gameplay do not take Italian ideas when you form Italy if you want to continue with a wide gameplay take Italian ideas pretty simple Italy has a really good mission tree as well of course I do need to touch on monuments as well you probably already know all of the great projects that are in Italy that you're going to take advantage of the Santa Maria del Fiore at tier 3 is absolutely amazing for someone like for instance the Royal Paris of Caserta is really good as well prestige reform progress growth golf cap you're going to be doing St. Peter's Basilica as well because we are going to be Catholic for the entirety of the campaign three really good monuments right here the one in Milan is pretty good as well well, especially for being Catholic at tier three. And then the one in Venice is really good as well. The Doge's Palace for republics and stuff like that. So all five of the monuments over here in Italy, really, really useful for us. Definitely make sure to upgrade them. You're going to be super rich as Florence and you're going to be doing them in no time. If you take over the Palace of the Popes, definitely make sure to upgrade that as well. And then we have this palace right here which you might conquer over from Aragon, says it is in the Valencia trade node. Really, really good for Catholic gameplay as well. So the potential monuments that you could take over are these right here. Really good for tall Republic Catholic gameplay. Definitely make sure to take over all of them. This is what we took for our first two idea groups, innovative and plutocratic. Really, really good for tall gameplay right here. For your third idea group, what I recommend is a money-making idea group or even infrastructure right here. Very underrated for tall gameplay. State maintenance, global prosperity, growth, construction discount, that's excellent expand infrastructure cost discount center of trade upgrade discount state governing cost port maintenance construction time and development discount super super important but if you're not that into infrastructure i recommend one of economic or trade as well the all three of these idea groups will help us with our tall making money gameplay so after innovative and pluto one of economic infrastructure or trade and then for your fourth one i recommend picking up another mill idea group such as quality both of the idea groups that we took and all four of the ones that i mentioned just now have awesome policies that measure very well with each other after that for your fifth one you can once again take one of these three and then for your sixth one you could continue with the final one of these three that you didn't take or you could go with quantity ideas because it has once again really good policies with the idea groups that we already took this is what we took for our first six government reforms for tier seven i recommend provincial governments or administrative divisions for tier eight i recommend empowering the burgers or embracing the economic theory for tier nine i recommend broad and executive powers for tier 10 principle of enlightenment is really good however if you don't want to take it go with one of these three right here each give you plus one possible policies in the respective categories for tier 11 citizen tree or military rulership are really good for tier 12 all of them are really good take whichever one you want it really doesn't matter and for tier 13 i recommend reinforcing republican values all of these government reforms that i just mentioned pertain to remaining a republic i do recommend remaining a republic if you're going to continue with your tall gameplay however if you're planning on forming italy later on and taking their national ideas and blobbing out then i recommend swapping to seizing executive power over on tier 6 so you can become a monarchy and like i said around the time colonialism spawns your realm should look a little something like this if you're not that confident in your abilities or if you're not sure if your game is going to go like mine this save file is available for all youtube members in the save games discord channel and you can continue playing as florence from this date forward let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that I should do a guide on. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like. It really helps out a lot. And if you like the content and want to see more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of them. And you can become a member today and join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.